Welcome back, gang. So now what I want to do is start working on this sidebar and adding some links to it. Okay, there's a very specific way that I want to do this that I found. Actually, it's pretty good to make things dynamic when you're using any list of links at all. Okay, and for this to work, we need to create a computed property. Okay, open it up with some curly braces. We're going to call this sidebar links, parentheses, curly braces, and then we're going to return an array. Okay, now the reason this is good because since we're doing it as an array, you can loop over all of the links that you're going to set up in this array. So the first one that we're going to use is actually it's a bit long, so I'm just going to copy and paste it for us, and then we'll break it down and take a look at it, okay? So, the first key that we have is name, and that's, we already know that we have that coming in from inertia. So, name, inertia, uh, image, alt, route, and that's it. That's all we need for that. So now what we want to do is, this inertia link, I'm just going to copy and paste this bit of code to make this a lot easier for us. Okay, so what we did here was now the href, let me, let me just close this for now. Um, the href is now the link because the the what we're looping over is for link in sidebar links. So now the main property that we're using is link. So link dot route is the same as coming from here. This will be the singular for this will be link, and then our route is profiles dot show, and then the parameter. Okay. Now link dot title. I don't have a title, so I'm actually just gonna add name to this. It doesn't really matter, it just needs something to be different, um, to just to show that it's a different, each one of them are different, okay? Now, this little bit of code right here, it's, it has to do with the hovering and the highlighting states. Um, so that's all this is. This is more of a Ziggy thing that you can check out the documentation on that and it'll explain why you would want to do this for your links. Basically, it just gives it an active state um, depending on what page you're on. Um, okay, so moving on, so our image has the link.image, which we have down here, the link.alt, which we also have down here, um, the same classes that we've been using, and this says vifLink.image. Now, we don't have any icons yet, we're going to do that right after we do this, but if there is a link icon, uh, dot icon in this computed property, then it will display it, and if not, it won't. Just as simple as that. Then we have link.name, which is down here. So let's see if this works. Let me open up our terminals real quick just to make sure they're still running. So I can delete that one and go back to these two just to make sure in case there's an error. So we'll come back here, we'll refresh. Hopefully, there's no error. But we can also open up our inspect tools. Okay, so this is the same, which is what it's supposed to be is the same. So we'll go to view. Why doesn't view open for me? We'll try this again. Open up our inspect. Try it again with view, view. Okay, now what we'll be looking for is, this is its own component, the sidebar. So we'll open this up, index, open it up, pages layout, open it up, app layout, and then we can scroll down a bit, and now we see our sidebar component. We can just click on that. So now this is our computed property. We only have one in there, and now you can see all of the keys that are a part of that 
computed property. Okay, so now the next thing that I want to add, uh, since we already have a page set up for it, is our user edit page. Okay, now we can go ahead and put that under this one here. Paste. Okay, now if you take a look, this profile.show, remember the one that we made was profiles.show. This link is going to go back to our edit page so that we can edit our user. Okay, don't worry about the icon, we're going to get to that in a second. Okay, so now we can refresh. And we'll probably get an error because of that icon, but we'll just take a look and see. And we do. Yep, the icon error. So, but as you can see, it shows up here. Okay, so now icons. How I do it is um, another YouTuber I saw do it, and I thought it was just it was just genius. Okay, so if you go to the font I font awesome web page and you go to their let's see the one that we need is user edit. Okay, you go and search for an icon. And we're going to be doing this as opposed to installing all of Font, I Font Awesome icons because it's just so big. It's such a massive package. Um, and so now look here. We have it here. Okay. So what you would do is, it's free because you can, if it wasn't, it would say pro. So it's free. You go to it. And then what you would do is we're we're going to be using the SVG versions of these icons, which is phenomenal. How you would do it is you would download it here. OK, you would download it here and there's this requires attribution. You can go ahead and click. Yes, this is a free um, free series that we're using. It's going to be for free. But if not, what you would want to do is give what's called attribution. So anytime you use these these SVGs, you would just want to have somewhere on your website that you are using font awesome icons. Okay, and then you would just go ahead and download. I've already done that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste it for us. So I'll just copy that. And what we're actually going to do is add another component. Okay, and this one we're going to call icon or icon dot view okay and just like all the other components we're going to put the template and then we're also going to put the javascript okay so then what you would want to do is you would want to come back up to your template and i normally put these in p tags i don't think you have to you can put them in anything you want i just do p tags uh, since we're working with tailwind it doesn't really matter because there's no styling but you do need some sort of um, some sort of element inside the template. So I just put P. Okay. And this is the SVG for uh, the first one that we'll be using. Also, down here in props, you want to put um, name. Because this is what we're going to use in a minute in order to be able to use this um, correctly. Um, one more side note, if you're going to do this, what I suggest is, um, if you copy this SVG, uh, they're all certain sizes. There's a really cool site that you can go to, um, and it's called, uh, SVG OMG. And what this does is it takes out all of the extra code in the SVG that you don't need. It just sort of sterilizes it, I guess is a good way to say it. So what you would do is um, you would just go to it. And once it loads up, you can just go right here to the left where it says paste markup. Then you would paste the SVG that you have. And as you can see, it shows the image that you have, but it strips out all of the just sort of junk that comes with the SVGs when you're using them. Um, 
and you can change what it is that you want to come out what you want to remove and I just leave it whatever the default settings are that's fine and as you can see the 440 bytes is now 431 bytes um, which I think is pretty cool um, it really does get rid of everything so now you can just copy it you go back to your code and just go ahead and paste it okay now even though this may not be great for performance I mean it is what it is I just like keeping things really as clear as possible so that I can see it clearly okay and that's all it does it just strips out I already did these with the ones that I have but if you start using them then it's something that you might want to try to use that SVG OMG thing okay and then up here in the beginning of the tag you can put the if name because that's the property that we're using down here equals and then just make a name for it so this one since this one already has a name of user edit I'm just going to use that as the name so user edit okay now in order to really get this to work globally what you would want to do is you would want to go to your app.js and this way you'll be able to use it throughout your whole app um, let's see we can put it uh, we can put it right here okay so we're gonna add a view component and our view component the name of it is icon okay and then if you've ever used um, Vue.js before the whole inertia addition to it, this is something that you would have needed to do anyway to import uh, components. So it's going to be components dot components, oh, sorry, dot slash components slash icon okay and that's the name of the default of the um the icon view dot default and then put a comment you know a semicolon at the end of here we'll let that compile down and now let's refresh once that's done we can go ahead and uh we don't need this anymore we can close that refresh and now you can see we have our brand new icon which also hovers because we added the classes to it okay so we can close this we don't need this anymore let me just add a space to that before I close it um, can close that and now anytime you want to add an icon the next thing you would just add is V else if to the next icon um, so we can close that that's done and there we go now we have two routes and let's just hover over it to make sure it would go to the right one so we can click that close this and now it goes to our edit page which is the same link as the one from here okay so let's go back to this. Well, it's, well, I suppose it doesn't really matter. So the next one I want to do is for the um, is for the members. So this way we can have easy access to the members without a problem. So I'll just copy, paste, because the next one we can add it here it's going to be members so again we have a name members page it, that's the name of the link and then we have a link and now the new icon we also need so I'm just going to go ahead and grab that because it's already I already have it I already have it added and styled
and we'll go ahead and add that to our icon file. Okay, we'll just put it right down here. Okay, so as you can see, VLs if. Now, one side note to this also is that um, Adam Waithin has a way of styling these. He gives, um, he's the one of the creators of Tailwind, and he gives different ways on how to style SVGs. So we already have the current color here and the width height of eight. If you go and check out some of his videos, he'll explain how the best way to do that. And so that's just essentially where I got it from. So let's go check out the page, see if it works. And there you have it. So now we have edit profile, we have members. Now we can click this and go to our members page. Okay, there we go. Okay, I think that's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. Click like if you found anything useful in this video. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.